and criminal defense attorney guests here in the studio to talk a little more about this case. Sarah Becker still with us and Natasha Harrison still with us as well. Thank you, ladies, so much. Um, and in New York, I want to thank attorney Joseph Marone. He is standing by in our studio in Manhattan. Uh, Joseph, thank you. Uh, Sarah, first question to you, please. Um, we know that there's going to be somewhat of a story going on outside of the courthouse and even in the courtroom with various accusers who were not part of the indictment, who were not being called as a Molino witness, not part of the case at all, but they're still uh, publicly accusing Harvey Weinstein uh, of misconduct, sexual misconduct. And so they've got something in common with the complaining witnesses and those we will see as part of the case. What effect do you think this might have on the defense case, on those jurors who might be trying to pay attention to what's happening in the witness box but might be distracted, perhaps, by how many folks are sitting in the gallery or what they see going in and out of the courthouse every day? Your thoughts, please. You know, my thoughts are that, again, this is a situation where both sides, I think, have to tackle it head on. I, I think they need to address the issue with the jurors, and they need to be clear to re focus their, um, their trial tactics to keep the jurors engaged in what the witness is saying, what's happening on the witness stand, as opposed to what may or may not be happening kind of in the gallery or outside the gallery. Um, they probably point. are going to have to pay close attention as well to um, conduct of the jurors. And, and I imagine that we haven't seen the last of motions regarding your conduct or your knowledge and and i'd anticipate that some of that might happen as the case continues as well they'll be keeping as close of an eye as they can on social media and things like that excellent point sarah natasha how much is it on the judge to make sure the focus of those jurors is totally on the testimony being presented in the courtroom it weighs heavily on the judge i mean at the end of the day he's the gatekeeper so he um, cannot make a decision. It's up to the jurors, but he has to act as a gatekeeper to determine what comes in, what goes out. Um, if a juror has engaged in any misconduct that should require them to be removed from the, uh, the, the jury pool, um, there are alternates. So that's an alternative um, if that does happen. So he's going to have to address that with the jurors on a daily basis because at the end of the day, I mean, social media is what it is. And we have to take into account that they're going to be exposed. They're not sequestered, so they're going to be exposed to what's going on in the media. It's unavoidable. Right. Uh, Joseph Marone, attorney standing by for us in New York City, I want to turn to you now. What do you do as an advocate if you're on the defense side in a case like this and you know there are going to be a kind of competing narratives, if you will, with what's going on outside of the courthouse with various accusers, maybe protesters, who knows what might happen. We saw a flash mob break out one day uh, recently. What might you do as an advocate? Do you address that at all to try to sharpen the focus of the jury and make sure they understand that no matter what's going on, they shouldn't concern themselves with it? I think that the defense's job is, is plain and simple, is they got to keep the jurors focused on the evidence, the evidence that's going to be presented in this case. they got to almost make like what's going on outside the courtroom is a complete nuisance. It has no meaning to the facts and evidence of this case. And the judge is going to explain that to the jurors, that they must only consider sworn testimony, testimony and information given on this case. So it's, it's the defense side to keep that juror pool focused, and to continue to hammer home at key evidence that supports their defense, that this was consensual, that, that despite all the victims that would testify, despite all the support that's here, there's no proofs whatsoever, whatsoever, okay, that show that there was any forcibility or anything that would go against consent. That's what the defense has to do. Now, it's going to be a tough job to do it, okay, mind you, in, in this circumstance, but that's where they have to keep, keep everything going. Yes, uh, great thoughts there. Attorney Joseph Marone in New York, thank you. Natasha Harrison, you're going to stay with us in the studio as well. Uh, Sarah Becker, we have to say goodbye to you. You've got to get going, but thank you so much uh, for lending us your expertise. Always a pleasure to see you. We're going to take a break now here on Court TV Live. When we come back, we will continue our preview of the big case we've been watching that is finally headed to trial, and that is New York versus Harvey Weinstein. Back in a moment.